raw food vegan diet, theatids and turn diet. If you are looking to overcome specific health issues like hormonal imbalances, you want to lose weight, you want to restore your fatigue, you want to optimize your body, you want to look and feel good. Well, here are the five main lessons we learned from being on a raw food diet, the 80 10 10 diet, and high raw food vegan diet for over 14 years now. Let's get started. Hi there, it's Paul and Yulia Tarbuth here, nutritionists and lifestyle coaches at Rawsome Healthy, helping you create healthy hormones, healthy weight, and a body of your dreams naturally. And if you're new here, hit subscribe and the bell button to stay up to date with our latest videos. So, if you are switching to a raw, high raw food diet, 80 10 10 diet, congratulations, because that obviously means that you are very conscious about your health, and let's put it that way, more advanced on your path. You haven't woken up realizing that McDonald's is bad for you yesterday. You've probably already been at it for a while, and you've explored different diets, and you are now realizing that the more raw food you eat, the more plant foods you eat, the better it is for your health. However, there are certain pitfalls that you can fall into. So in today's video, we are going to talk about the five main lessons that we learned from my journey, 28 years combined on this lifestyle plan. Okay, so the first lesson we learned is that raw food diets can be different. So you've got the gourmet raw food diet or the high fat raw food diet where you eat lots of fat in there. So typically lots of avocados, nuts and seeds, maybe oils, raw oils and this kind of thing. Another name for it, a more popular <laughs> one is keto raw. Yes, yes, keto raw. So it's very high fat. The other side of the equation, as it were, of the raw food diet is going to be high carbs. So we're going to be talking basically lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, um, a small amount of fat, you know, could be around 10% or so approximately of total daily calories. So that's at the other end of the spectrum. And the thing is that when you're switching to a, a raw food diet or a higher raw food diet, there are just two ways for you to get your calories. It's either going to be from carbohydrates or from fat. Yes, because you simply cannot eat enough salads to fulfill your caloric needs. It's not possible. So then you need to get those calories from somewhere. And it's either going to be from carbohydrates or it's going to be from fat. And the difference between the two, the high carbohydrate diet, is obviously a better diet for your long-term health. And why, why is that? So yes, why is eating a high-carb diet better than eating a high-fat diet? Well... There's the issue of your body runs on glucose, so simple sugars. So what do you get from carbohydrates? Lots of simple sugars. Yes. <laughs> you get lots Delicious. of glucose. So your body doesn't Delicious. even have to process those gl that glucose. It just literally uses it straight away. The other side of it is you've got things like circulation in your body. If you're eating a lot of fat in your diet, that can potentially slow down circulation, especially in the little blood vessels and pillories in your body. And obviously, you've got to think about your brain as well. And I'm, and I'm sure that you know, people out there, and we've experienced it ourselves, if you have a high-fat meal, let's just say you have a, a raw food meal, and a lot of high-fat, a lot of fat in there, a lot of nuts and seeds, the next day or you two, feel washed. you can feel like, wow, my brain's not working properly. It, yeah. it feels like foggy. Yeah. And that's really down to circulation because of all that fat in your bloodstream. So that's another thing to understand. So that then slows down the nutrient uptake and the oxygen and everything else that's going into your cells. So that's really important to understand. There's a, the blood sugar issue as well. So if you have lots of fat in your diet, that fat is going to go into your body's cells. It's going to clog it up. So when your pancreas creates that insulin you know, to deliver your blood sugar into those cells, it could potentially then start to have a problem because there's too much fat in the cell gumming up that insulin receptor. So when you go down in your level of fat, go high carb, then you get rid of that excess fat in your body's cells and then it can work properly and the insulin then starts working properly. This is how we help people who've got type 2 diabetes to overcome it or blood sugar imbalances to overcome it by eating high carb. Yes, lots of healthy sugars from whole foods, whole fruits and going lower in fat. And another issue as well is hormones because carbohydrates are vital for the health of your adrenal glands, for the health of your thyroid glands, for your liver as well. That's where glycogen is stored. So carbohydrates are needed for that. And you need to understand that because if you want to restore your body, if you've got health issues and you know that that's the next step for you, 
then you need to make sure that you're doing it the right way. And that is going to be the 8 to 10, 10. And we agree with the 8 to 10, 10 approach. And it might be that you eating a little bit more than 10% fat in your diet. Maybe it's 12 or 15% fat, but overall a high carbohydrate and a healthy fat, that's what we call it, uh, diet is a much better diet for your health. Okay, so this brings us on to the second lesson, and that is restoring specific health conditions with the help of a raw or high raw food diet plan. So when we switched to a raw food diet plan, I was going through a health crisis and I was going through a hormonal roller coaster. I had hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, which I didn't even know I had at the time, so an autoimmune thyroid disease, PCOS, fertility issues, candida, my liver was hurting all the time, my blood sugar was unstable, and I had a lot of issues to balance. And what you need to realize, and what I've realized from my journey, yes, first I switched to a raw food diet and kind of like ignored the the rest of it, I just thought that it would take care of it. There are some stubborn health conditions and specifically when it comes to your hormones and gut health, where a raw food diet alone might not be enough. So you will need to address other areas in your body, for example, gut health, work on your adrenal health and rebalancing your adrenals. Yes, a raw food diet is amazing for it and it might work for a lot of people, but if your condition is very stubborn and you've already tried so many different diets and you've worked with Maybe you've already tried a raw food diet and you still got your issues. Know that there are deeper layers for you to go into. And again, an example of me is when I switched to a raw food diet, I had Hashimoto's. I didn't know I had it at the time. And about three years or so into raw food diet, I tested my antibodies. That's where I finally found out that I had Hashimoto's. And they were high. So a raw food diet alone, even now, I stuck to it and I really followed it to a T and 80, 10, 10 and very strict. Yeah, so very strict in terms of what I was eating. That still wasn't enough to lower my antibodies until I went deeper and worked on many other areas, gut health and restoring adrenals and uh, reversing autoimmunity. So just know that sometimes a diet, raw food diet alone is not enough, although for many people and many of our clients it will be. So for example, we have clients who come to us, they switch to raw food, they're doing amazing. We put them on the right plan, we create it for their needs, they're doing amazing right away on just a raw food diet. And then we also have clients who come to us with issues and or they're already on the raw food diet and they still have issues. So there are deeper layers for you to balance if you have specific health conditions. The next one is avoiding raw food dogma. Yes, unfortunately, there's a lot of raw food dogma out there. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people who think that if you just eat a raw food diet, that's it. That's all or you, you need just to fast. Do. Yeah. You just drink water. And... That's all you need to do. And uh, there's nothing else you need to do. In some instances, that can work for people, yes. But in a lot of instances, it doesn't work, unfortunately. And let me give you an example. So vitamin D, you could be living in a climate where it's very cloudy a lot of the year. You're not getting enough sunshine eating a raw food diet, you can get low in vitamin D. Which, and, is, which is negative, which is bad for you. Which is not a good thing. And there are a lot of studies out there showing that actually you want to get good vitamin D levels and maintain them all year round. And supplementing can definitely help you do that. Sure, when you get enough sunshine, don't need to supplement, get the sunshine because that is the best way for you to get your vitamin D because that's when your body creates it for you. But if you can get it, then at least supplement with some vitamin D. Another one is vitamin B12. So you know, an idea that your body makes its own vitamin B12, where it can make its own vitamin B12, or more specifically, the bacteria in part of your gut can make the B12, but it's in the wrong place. So you can actually absorb it, so get the benefit from it. So it's a very, very, very good idea to make sure you supplement with vitamin B12, because if you don't, you can definitely go low and become deficient, and you definitely don't want to do that, because it can have serious ramifications for your health. It can damage your nervous system and uh, permanently if you're not careful. So you really don't want to take chance with something like vitamin B12. Supplement with it, take a sublingual under the tongue. It's very easy to do, go straight into your bloodstream, job done. Another mistake that you want to avoid is ignoring testing and just like ignoring the medical world completely. So it's like, it's all nonsense. All the tests that have been done on people and the range is the nonsense. 
So for instance, if you test yourself and you low in B12, oh, well, never mind, because the ranges were done on unhealthy people anyway, and I just need to ignore that. Well, that doesn't work that way at all. There are regular ranges. So let's say there is like a, for B12, it's between 200 and 800, just for example, just depending on the lab, it's going to be a difference. And you want to be about 500 for, for, in order for, for you to have enough B12 level in the body. But if you ignore that, if you, let's say you're below the range and you, you just have this raw dogma that it doesn't even matter and, you know, we're just going to ignore it and it's not a wise approach at all. And the same goes for your certain other things, like your hormones, for example, with your thyroid. Well, with your TSH, T3 and T4 thyroid hormones, you want to be in specific ranges, not even the range that the doctor gives you. You want to be in the more ideal range. And if you're more not, optimal. more optimal, more optimal range. And if you're not, then you need to optimize your nutrient intake. Some of it can be from food. Some of it might need to be from supplementation. You might need to optimize some inflammation in your body or your gut health. So you want to get into the optimal ranges. The same goes for ferritin, for example, which is so important for your hair. It is very important for your adrenal health, for your thyroid health. And again, if you are too low and you just ignore it, then that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing for your body. So you want to be in the optimal ranges. And if you're not, then you want to correct it. And that can be done through food or lifestyle. It can be done through supplementation. That can be done through correcting certain issues in your body. But know that you should not ignore the, the medical a, a, approach. And it is wise to get tested just to see where your levels are at, especially with regards to B12 and vitamin D. And if you maybe if you have thyroid imbalances, then you're going to test your thyroid levels and you're going to test your nutrients le nutrient levels that are especially relevant to your thyroid health. So all that is important and do, do not ignore that. So the next lesson is a more psychological one and it's about not fitting into this society any longer. Yes, yeah, so you are eating a very different diet compared to a lot of people. 99% of people, let's just say it that way, in our world, and all of a sudden you're not fitting in, and all of a sudden uh, friends that you had, you're eating a very different diet, you're leading a very different lifestyle, and with your family gatherings and so forth, so that brings about its own challenges, and when you start to feel sort of like bad about it, that you're not fitting in, here is what you need to understand, you are not meant to fit in. And I'll repeat that again. You are not meant to fit into this world. You are not. Because you are here to create something different. You are here to become a different human being. And you are here to shine that bright example to people around you. And if you don't do it, if you keep yourself at that... Small. Uh, keep yourself small and yeah. keep yourself at that level of greater density in terms of consciousness and in terms of habits and in terms of ignorance then you're not going to become the person you are here to be. And if you are sort of like, you know what, I really believe that I'm here to be a very different person. I want to experience different level, a, a different level of health. I don't want to be suffering. I don't want to be diagnosed with all the major uh, modern diseases, cancer, type 2 diabetes, heart diseases, heart-related diseases, autoimmune diseases. And you understand that, actually, I want to reverse it. I want to prevent it in the future. I want to live a different life you are going to be different to everyone else and you need to own it. Or to a lot of people anyway. To, to a, lot a lot of, of people. people. A lot of people, that's right. You need to own it and you need to embrace that challenge and all the tensions it will bring into your life because you will go through them. And uh, Paul and I, for instance, yes, we are fine with going and celebrating Christmas with our families or a special family do's and and go in there, but we will never eat the food that they eat. Or oh, some of it anyway. You know, we'll eat our fruits and vegetables, yes. We'll eat our plant foods. And they know that. And we've been on this path for long enough for them to not even say a word to us about it. It's not an issue anymore. And while to start with, as you are separating, yes, so you've been part of a herd, so to speak, in the simplistic term, uh, and you are separating from it and you are moving in a different direction, yeah, there's going to be frictions and tensions but you need to be firm on your path and you need to remember that you need to own it and you need to understand that you know what 
it's a challenge. I'm accepting the challenge. I'm owning it because I do want to live a different life. And once you've decided that, you draw that line in the sand and you move forward and you need to surround yourself by people who are going to be lifting you up, who, by people who are going to be inspiring you, educating you, coaching you, uh, mentoring you, supporting you. And that's, that, that will need to become your reality. While at the same time, you can still interact with you know, your family members and your friends and, and go out and whatnot, but you don't have to do what they are doing. So the next one is evolving consciousness. So as you evolve in your consciousness, one of these things which we will focus on is your diet. You're going to focus on your diet because it's hugely important. What you eat every day, all those meals you have, really does build your body. And, and build your mind as well. So it's important exactly. to see your evolution, your conscious evolution. Yeah, your conscious evolution because... How you think is affected by what you eat without any question. Yes. That inflammation in your body that's created by unhealthy foods, by processed foods and animal foods as well, that's not going to help you think and be clear and have a different mood and a different level of consciousness. So when you eat plant foods, lots of those phytochemicals in there, lots of those antioxidants, they're going to fuel your body. They're going to protect your body, protect your cells. They're going to offer you a different level of consciousness. You're going to feel better in yourself, a better mood typically. And this is going to affect you in your everyday life and how you interact with yourself and interact with other people. And ultimately, as you evolve in your consciousness, self-love becomes at the center of it because we've got to love ourselves in order to build a better world around us. And when you realize, okay, my body is so precious and so special and I really need to put the best foods into it and I need to lead the best, a much better lifestyle and look after my mind, body, spirit, so to speak, yeah, so or look after yourself or on, on all levels, that's when you awaken to so much self-love and that's when you become a lot more self-aware. And as you are doing so, as you become in that, you are going to start becoming more self-aware in other areas of your life. For example, you will become more, much more tuned to your intuition. And this is the best for me personally. It's one of the biggest rewards of this lifestyle is when you feel so connected to yourself. There is no barrier between you and your soul and your communication with yourself and your body and the way it all fits together holistically. Because people will often use food to numb themselves. Yes. Numb their emotions, make themselves feel better. So I'll eat a big heavy fat meal or lots of processed foods and I'll just numb myself. They don't want to feel their emotions. But really, if we want to evolve and raise our consciousness, we need to feel our emotions so we can really understand who we are and act and think in a different way. Yes, just, just to give you an example, we had three deaths in our family in the last uh, few months and it's been really tough. And we are meant to be feeling uncomfortable emotions as well as comfortable emotions because when we go to that level, when we contract, right, uncomfortable emotions contract us within ourselves. And when you know that more contracted space, you start to reevaluate re your life. You start to think differently. All of a sudden, you you start to question a lot of things in life. You start to change certain things in life. And if you maintain that vulnerability, yes, you are in a vulnerable place when certain things happen and certain unpleasant things happen in life. But you're opening yourself up to it and you know that as you do so, there's also going to be gifts and healing and strength that you will gain, gain from it. But you're not changing your diet. You're not numbing yourself. You are not turning away from yourself. If anything, yes, you are more exposed, you're more vulnerable and you embrace it and celebrate it because you are a human being and you are not meant to be as tough and constantly just like on a go and never stop. And that's just not possible. That's not who you are. So you're celebrating different parts of you. And again, nutrition is so important because it allows you to Go through it and it allows you to continue restoring your body, nourishing your body as you go in through tough moments in life, as you're going through easy and light moments in life, it's just like a breeze, everything flows and you're just like cruising through it. Yes, yeah, so at the same time, you're staying connected to yourself and you keep on bringing the best foods into yourself. And I'm sure one of the reasons or one of the main reasons why you want to eat more raw foods in your diet is because your consciousness is evolving. It is pushing you to move and expand. It is pushing you to consume much cleaner foods that you're putting into your body. It is pushing you to finally address dis-ease 
dis-ease and heal that and start re repairing your body because again your body is a precious gift and that's a vehicle for evolution we need to repair it just like you wouldn't drive a broken car why do you keep on you know putting junk into your trunk and expect to live a great life so if you are on the path of healing and you would like to discover the five steps that our clients use in order to restore their hormones in order to lose weight effortlessly eating all the carbs they care for and also restore their fatigue and start thriving instead of surviving and struggling, then join us for a free online training class. We've put it together. The link for that is rosamhealthy.com forward slash webinar. Go and grab yourself a spot and thousands of people have watched it already. I'm sure you'll benefit from it too. And we're going to link this video to another video where we show you different strategies you can use to balance your hormones. See you there. See you there.